After the end of World War II, something had to be done about the large number of surplus warships in the Navy's inventory. At the outbreak of the war, production of naval vessels exploded, with the American Navy eclipsing the Royal Navy as the strongest naval force in the world. The United States ended the war with 28 aircraft carriers, 71 escort carriers, 23 battleships, and hundreds of cruisers, destroyers, and convoy escorts. A navy this large was unnecessary during peacetime, and the insane cost of upkeeping all these vessels dictated that many were either scrapped or placed in the reserve fleet. Ships that were not to remain on active duty were placed in the reserve fleet, or mothballed, a term that originated during the Civil War. The first step in mothballing a ship was to remove all perishable items and as much equipment as they could. Fuel, food stocks, personal equipment, and small caliber guns were all taken ashore. One of the biggest concerns was corrosion. Because mothballed ships would not be receiving the same attention as active vessels, a more long-term solution was needed. Some ships had their hulls covered in one of several types of special paint, while others used electric methods to deter corrosion. Thick layers of grease were then applied to moving parts inside the ship, especially in the engine room. Parts of the superstructure and remaining deck-mounted weapons that could not be removed had to be protected as well. Protective structures, known as igloos, were installed over the 5-inch and 40-millimeter gun mounts. A form-fitting plastic covering could also be used if the igloos were too inconvenient. These were easily removable if the ship was reactivated. Because of their size, the larger guns simply had a cap installed at the end of the barrel after a final cleaning was performed. Most optical, range-finding, and radar equipment was also removed from the ships to prevent deterioration. Ships were then placed next to each other in Long Rosen's shipyards, the largest being located in Susan Bay. These warships were occasionally reactivated during the Korean War and Cold War years, however the number of World War II era ships that were deemed fit for service slowly declined each time. Because of advances in technology and deterioration of the ships in spite of the preservation techniques, the number of vessels being transferred to scrapyards steadily increased. By the late 1990s, the majority of remaining World War II ships had been scrapped. Susan Bay still held a few, but the last was sent away in 2015. So what happened to some of the most iconic ships of the war, the battleships? Well, it was decided that only four of the most modern battleships, the Iowa class, will remain on active duty. The rest would either be placed in the reserve fleet or scrapped. Even during the war, it became abundantly clear that battleships were being eclipsed by aircraft carriers as the king of the seas, and four battleships was seen as more than enough. These four ships, the Iowa, Wisconsin, New Jersey, and Missouri, were decommissioned and recommissioned throughout the latter half of the 20th century. The last battleship to be decommissioned was the Missouri, after having served in Operation Desert Storm. These four ships have been converted to museums and can be visited today. Many of the non-Iowa-class battleships stay in the reserve fleets for a relatively short amount of time. Some were scrapped, with others being used in atomic tests. Only a handful of non-Iowa-class ships became museum ships. Thanks for watching this short video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you feel I've earned it, please consider subscribing. I post videos like this every week. Thank you.